Hello loves and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evelyn and I'm here to talk about just my weight loss journey, my sex sender journey, and um, some personal things in between. I have now been on Sexenda for about four weeks. Um, it's something that I decided to do because I really recognized that I needed some additional help. The last two years, I've been kind of um, at a standstill with my weight. About over a year ago, I lost my brother and that was really hard. Um, at that time, I had just hired this like macro coach, which I paid too much money for. I think with weight loss, you really have to be mentally ready. I think that's where I'm at, where I could focus and put my energy in myself and my weight loss journey and so on and so forth. I also last year had a hysterectomy and having a hysterectomy definitely, I feel like changed my metabolism. Um, that's gonna be a separate video. I definitely wanna share my hysterectomy story because um, it was a lot. <laughs> but I feel like after that, it's been really, really hard to lose weight, uh, even five pounds. A few months ago, I decided, you know, I feel like I need some additional help. I've tried to diet on my own. I work out normally anyhow, but I just felt like I needed something extra. And to be honest with you, last month, I believe, I went to a women's conference here in Texas um, at Gateway Church, and it was great. And they had all these really cool, like, photo op places and i took a picture and i had my makeup done and everything and i thought i looked good and when they printed out that picture and i saw that picture i was like that cannot be me and that was like my huge wake up call that's really my why i was like i need help i feel like i've been just out of control and just really having a really hard time controlling my hunger my snacking stress eating i'm definitely a stress eater um i'm not one of those people say oh i forgot to eat or i didn't eat because i'm so stressed i lost weight because of stress no I'm the opposite, I gained weight, unfortunately. I decided I'm gonna need some extra help. Uh, talking to a coworker of mine, uh, she was on um, Manjaro. So she told me she got that through this website called Alpha, which is also the website I went through. It's like an online doctor. It's not telehealth because they don't see you, which I don't fully recommend to be honest with you because I wish I would have had more support with this process, but they do prescribe like medication and I had, like I said, I had wanted the Manjordo. When I started to fill out the paperwork, I'm fluffy, but not fluffy enough apparently. And I'm under the 30% BMI, which is kind of what they require. They require for you to be obese to take the other one. So they gave me some different options and we decided on Succenda. That was the whole process, okay? Getting it approved through my insurance, having to get a pre-authorization, like that whole thing, I wanna say took about like two weeks. But well, finally, they prescribed it to me. I started to take it. I started to watch all these YouTube videos, which is really why I wanted to start doing these videos because really there's not a lot of people on Sexenda or doing videos about them. So I just wanted to share my journey and be able to just give a bit of insight, a bit of experience, talk about my side effects and so on just to help other people. Because other people's videos have really helped me so much and just helped me and to know what to expect because if I'm honest, I didn't get a lot of like medical guidance. So this is Saxenda. It's a, a daily injection. Okay, it comes like this. Um, it doesn't have the needle. Uh, the needle, by the way, I didn't ask for it to be sent initially and I've had to buy my own needles. If you could get a prescription for it, you're gonna be better off, but the ones they did prescribe were then sold out. Um, it has this little marking, okay? And there's different dosages. You start off, I believe it's 0 0.6, 1 1.2, 1.8, 2 2.4, until the maximum of three. Uh, you inject yourself daily. So that's the difference between this and like Wagovi and Manjordo, like the other ones you could uh, inject once a week, which I would love and prefer, but again, they wouldn't prescribe that for me. Another thing I wanna mention was, I think my BMI was about 29, 28% or something. But I do have high blood pressure. So I'm not sure if that's the reason. I kind of like, they kind of made an exception, exception and um, went ahead and prescribed me the medication. So just FYI, everybody's different. I know some insurance don't cover it. I know some doctors are not comfortable with prescribing it. And that's why I just found it easier to get it online. And that was my route. Um, and that was just the easiest thing for me. I will tell you this, when I picked up my prescription, the prescription said to take three, the, the maximum amount, which was I think three milligrams. And thank God that I had already done so much research 
and watch videos that I knew like hold on I'm not supposed to start at that high dosage and I then message um, you have like a little chat that you message your nurse or doctor through the app and they went ahead and let me know no you're gonna start off at 0 0.6 so on and so forth I'm really big that you have to be your own health advocate because if I would have just taken that I would have been so sick Let's talk about side effects. Everybody's different. Everybody's body is different. Actually, when I took it, I started taking it on a Thursday. I felt fine. I didn't really feel much of a difference. But by the time that Saturday came along, I had like these nice dinner plans with my daughter. I have an adult daughter. And she was going to take me out and treat me for a change, which is great. And we were going to go to this really cute spot here in, um, that's close to me in Dallas called Elephant East. And we were excited and we had made our reservations. And the day of on Saturday, I was out grocery shopping and I just started feeling like queasy. Oh, uh, I just feel like I can't eat. I started to feel like a little dizzy. Nothing extreme, but by the time I got home, I was like, yeah, I don't know if I feel well. I felt that if I would have made myself go, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. I had to drive and everything in Texas here, everything is far from each other. So I would have had to like drive far and I just feel like I couldn't stomach it. So I had to cancel my plans. I've seen some videos where they say you have to really like prepare yourself and prepare your family for the change of lifestyle that you have on these medications. Because the reality is if you revolved your time around or your plans around, we're gonna go eat, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go there, we're foodies for sure. Your life kind of changes a little bit with that. So I wish I would have known more of that, but I didn't. So I've had to learn pure trial and error which is fine because I'm media cabezona on this channel, we're gonna speak Spanglish. And I just learned by pure trial and error. So that's what happened in my case. So the first few days I started to feel queasy, nothing out of this world. I did feel a little tired. I would say the first week, I didn't feel like a huge difference. Like I didn't feel like, oh, I'm not hungry. You know, some people are like, I'm not hungry. I can't eat anything. I could barely drink water. No, I felt like I was eating just fine. But I will tell you this, every time I went to change my dosage, that's when you feel the side effects, guys. So when I went from 0.6 to 0.1.2, I felt it. Um, I tried to be a little adventurous with my food. Um, we went to our friend's place and we were having arepas, like Venezuelan arepas, and they had like fried plantains. And guys, I ate that on a Friday night. Saturday morning, I was not feeling well. And I was having these things like kebena, like they're called sulfur burps. They're ungodly, they're disgusting. There's these burps that you feel like that smell, like you feel like they smell like rotten egg. I've actually watched a video of somebody, they were like, I was burping and everybody could smell it and I'm like, I'll die, me muero, like me muero. So I was just like, keep it to myself. I wasn't gonna, you know, but I just felt so bad. I had this like heartburn. I felt like I couldn't digest the food. Like everything I ate was stuck here. So that was complete torture. I will tell you from that day, I don't think I've eaten anything fried in these last few weeks i have it because everything like i've wanted i've just like air fried because i you get sick and you're just like it's not worth it which makes me think like this is how people like who probably get like the bypass feel where they physically can't eat those things that's what happens so every time i've gone up in dosage your body goes through it so i would highly highly recommend that you change your dosage i've chosen to change my dosage on the weekends even if it's past my week just so that if I don't feel well, I have the weekend to recover or if just I'm tired. So changing my um, to 1.2 and then 1. I think it's 1.2 and then 1.8. I felt sick both times. Uh, like I said, really bad heartburn. There was a day my stomach was messed up. Again, everybody's different. I've had a lot of constipation. TMI, I know, but I wanna know and I've had to take stuff, which was then painful. I will tell you this, I am now up to 2.4 and I stood at 2.4 now for about like a week and a half and I haven't increased it because I feel like I'm good at this point. So why am I gonna increase it? And my last switch of going from 1.8 to 2.4 wasn't too harsh on my body. I think like anything, your body adjusts to it. I'll be honest, I think when I switched to 1.8 that weekend, I was like, I don't think I could do this. I'm just being honest with you. I was like, I can't live like this. Like you just, I was so nauseous. There was a day there actually I was throwing up. I wasn't feeling well. I don't know if it was a stomach virus or not, but I felt like it was all together. And I was like, I can't do this, but it passes like anything else. My body adjusted to it. And I'm really glad I've stuck with it. Okay, so it's a little rough at the beginning, but I think it's worth it. 
as the time has passed it has really helped curve my hunger it's helped curve like that desesperacion that i just want to like pick at something and eat all the time i will tell you initially it's interesting because you have like a little bit of an addict mentality you're not hungry but like i'll go to the store and i love like hot cheetos like the lemon one and i always eat that with another candy and i was gonna get it and i was like why am i getting this like i don't even want this like i'm not gonna be able to stomach this but it's almost like you gotta like switch that in your head and remind yourself like no you're really not that hungry or no that's not what you really want you're just used to always doing that so it's really a psychological process as well um, especially if you're an emotional eater and you are used to turning to food guess what you don't have the food anymore and you're then gonna have to deal with your crap <laughs> whether it's your anxiety your stress you're gonna have to confront it you're gonna have to deal with it it's a process but it's completely worth it what everybody wants to know i've been on it like i said for four weeks and i have lost now about six pounds six pounds doesn't sound like a lot you'll see people on different channels that they have lost 11 pounds 15 pounds in a month i have a total 25 pounds to lose so maybe it's at a lower rate i thought i was gonna lose more i'll be honest with you but i have seen a big difference in like inflammation my face is not as swollen probably my next video i'll show you guys that before picture i was telling you guys about that i was traumatized with i feel less swollen my clothes are fitting better um, this last week I did I was been sick. I didn't have time to work out. So I'm gonna start stepping up my workout I started carb cycling to see if that would help me. I know some people do low carb on this I am not a big fan of low carb and For me personally when I've been nauseous or I just really haven't wanted to eat The only thing that appeals to me is like cut up fruit from like Whole Foods You know where they have cut up the little mangoes like that's the only thing that's appealing and It's the only thing I could stomach so I do feel like I need to step it up a bit, like with my workouts um, and just be more consistent, but I've eaten pretty clean for the last few weeks. I will say I have like one meal out of my norm uh, once a week and really there's only so much you can have, right? So you could go there and be like, I want a huge meal. You can't stomach it and you're not gonna be able to stomach it. So I just really end up sharing a lot of my meals and stuff. I am gonna go ahead and try to post like probably once a month. I feel like that's realistic. When you do once a week, it's kind of, uh, I feel like disappointing to share if you've lost like 0.2 pounds or so on. But right now I've hit a plateau and this last week I haven't lost any weight. And I am at 140.6, I believe. And I can't believe I'm sharing my weight here. Like I don't share my weight day to day, but here I am sharing it for everybody to see. We're gonna be on this journey together and I'll keep you guys posted. I wish the scale would at least go down to 139, but no, it's like 140.2 and it's like, come on, give me a break. So hopefully I'll be able to break that plateau this week. My total weight loss, like I said, have been about like a bit over six pounds. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions, if you guys are on the journey, if you're thinking about getting six endo so that we could walk through this process together. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any of my future six endo videos. Bye guys.